Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Training Lab. I've got a clutch master cylinder, line, and external slave cylinder with a bleed screw. I'm going to demonstrate a procedure to bench bleed this on the bench. We're going to put DOT3 brake fluid into it in just a few minutes, start a basic bleeding procedure, and then we're going to prove that it's bled before we install it in the vehicle and drive the truck or car away. Now one thing we're going to start with right here is on the slave cylinder. This happens to have a bleed screw on it, but it also has these shipping straps or retaining straps. If the system you're working with has those, just push in on the push rod, release those straps. We're going to take the push rod itself and the boot and remove them. Now we've got this nice flange here. So now I'm going to use a steering wheel puller or harmonic damper puller, and I'm going to insert that into the slave cylinder. Those are some 5 16 bolts. And I'm going to use two wing nuts to attach the steering gear puller to the slave cylinder. Now the idea behind this is that with this puller, we're going to block the piston from extending. With the piston blocked from extending, I'll be able to tell as I push on the push rod of the master cylinder if the system is bled. Then to do the actual bleeding, we're going to use the bleed screw and we're going to do a little technique that I call pushback bleeding or reverse bleeding. I'm going to use a 3 8 extension and I'm going to use that to compress the piston of the slave cylinder. I'm going to drive those last few air bubbles up and out of the system. So let's get the bench set up. We'll get some DOT3 in here and bleed this external slave cylinder with a bleed screw. All right, now we're set up, got the master cylinder open, and I've done something to the slave cylinder I'll show you in just a second. I've blocked it so we can actually tell when it's fully bled. So we're going to go ahead and fill the reservoir up. Then we're going to go down and open up the bleed screw. Now I'm going to try and catch this fluid just to keep the floor clean here. Let's see how successful we are. Put the little hex key wrench in the bleed screw. And open it up. We've got a bunch of air coming through. And I'm watching the fluid level go down. There we go. And that's almost a reservoir, so I'm going to close it off. And add more fluid. Open up the bleed screw, get some more air, get some more fluid out. You can actually see air bubbles kind of coming out down here every so often. Tilting at different positions, trying to get that last bubble out. There we go. That's about two reservoirs. Now we're going to adjust the fluid level, give us a little reserve in there, not fill it up this time, about halfway. Now we're going to make a change. We're going to take the steering gear puller and take the screw out. You want to make sure as you're working with these that the screw doesn't touch the bore, so you make sure this is the right size. I'm going to put a 3 8 extension in the hole where the steering gear puller screw was. Now watch up top in the reservoir as I push down. Bubbles are coming out. So we got a whole lot of fluid in there. We still got a few bubbles. Push it again. Now another technique we utilize, tapping on the line, loosen those air bubbles up. Sometimes you'll see one pop out while you're doing that. Kind of gets them ready to go. Compressing the slave cylinder. Look at that, a couple little bubbles came out. That's all good. That all helps.
Now, how do you know when it's bled? Well, it looks good right now, but using this steering gear puller actually allows you to test your work. So we're going to put the screw in, put it up against the piston, and turn it in just a little bit. Okay, now the slave cylinder is blocked with the steering gear puller. I'm going to go up top and I'm going to push on the push rod and see how it feels. It's bled. We've got less than that one-eighth of an inch piston travel. It's bled. We can install this in the vehicle with confidence and drive it away. So in just a few short minutes on the bench, we were able to bench bleed this system and prove that it was working. Now a couple of things I did that really helped us out also, I made sure the line was always pointed uphill. Don't create any humps in the line that would allow an air bubble to just sit there and move back and forth. I want the air bubbles to go up and out. Notice the orientation of the master cylinder. It's not horizontal. It's definitely not with the front end down. That would allow an air bubble to be created back here or trapped. The front end is up. It's high. So an air bubble comes up here and goes out the front end. But using this technique is very, very helpful. Now, do all slave cylinders adapt to that technique? Here's a collection that easily would adapt to that. Each one has a flange on the front of it, but they're not all built that way. Here's two examples. This one clips onto the side of the transmission. This one's quarter turn installs in the transmission. So you need to look at each one of these systems and say, is there some way that I can safely block that so I can do this test and bleed the system? This one, for example, we're just going to remove the push rod and the boot. Now we've got this nice flange back here that you could put a two or three jaw puller on. Make sure that the screw is a small enough diameter that it doesn't scratch the bore of the slave cylinder and you've got it blocked. You can do the same testing and the same types of bleeding techniques. Perfection has redesigned slave cylinders and added bleed screws to those that didn't have them. This bleed screw addition gives you different servicing options when you go to bleed the system and if you'd like to be able to flush the system Exchange that dot three later on for fresh fluid. A bleed screw certainly will make that a lot easier. If you have any questions about hydraulic systems for clutches, clutches or flywheels, please call Perfection at 800-258-8312. Press four and your call will be routed to Tony, Steve, Bobby or myself. We'll be glad to take your call and help you out.